All right, I'm ready to uh, start painting the chair. So first we gotta gotta mix the paint up, and uh, I use milk paint <coughs> uh, paint the chair with, and the type of milk paint I use is from the old fashioned milk paint company. There's other milk paints out there. I don't know anything about them. They they're they're probably good. Good products. I've never I've never used them before. I've used this one for 30 years, and this is the one I know. And uh, I don't want to change horses and mill a string. <coughs> Try something else. So these work. This is going to be uh, uh, a black over red finish. Uh, so what I do is I use I use the barn red. I order it in gallons. If you if you know you might be ordering it in pints or quarts or something, it'll come in a sealed. Uh, <clears throat> aluminum bag, but uh, uh, when you order it in gallons, it comes in this plastic bag. I keep it in the freezer, and I go through them fairly, fairly fast because I make so many chairs. But uh, so let's see. For uh, for one chair, I usually will do a, a third of a cup of paint. And then here's where it kind of gets tricky. <clears throat> the amount of water I add has to do with uh, the color of the paint. Uh, and I don't know why you have to call them and talk to them, but uh, the black, for instance, takes more water than any of the other colors that I've, that I've used. I haven't used all the colors, but... Uh, uh, and the barn red takes takes quite a bit too. So, and this is uh, hot water out of the tap. So I'm going to put in two. I've got a two to one mix there, and uh, let's put some water over here so I can clean a little bit. Okay. So I mix it up a little bit with my stirring stick. <clears throat> and now beat it with the egg beater. Somebody told me that the directions say not to beat it and foam it up. But I foam it up pretty good. cheesecloth here, uh, just a single layer of, of cheesecloth, and uh, and for some reason I bought cheesecloth at the hardware store in a little package, and I bought cheesecloth at the uh, fabric store, and they're different, and I don't like the cheesecloth at the hardware store, I always go to the fabric store. <clears throat> set this to the side for 15 to 30 minutes and what will happen is the foam will rise to the top and then I'm going to uh, scoop the foam off and I'll be left with some nice creamy paint underneath that so we'll just set that to the side and so I'll show you what uh, <clears throat> what color I'm going after here this is a little high chair that I just made and uh, <clears throat> If you can see in the film, there's a red glow underneath it. So uh, I'll put uh, <clears throat> two to three coats of red, depending on which part I'm painting, because it's, it's different woods, and different woods will take the paint uh, uh, differently. And then there's uh, two wash coats of black over over that, and then oil on top of that. So we'll. Uh, it's probably about an eight-hour process spread over five or six days, something like that. So uh, <clears throat> I'll try to show you every every step of that. Uh, so the first thing that uh, I've done on this chair to prepare it for painting is I've raised the grain. And uh, uh, milk paint being water-based, 
will raise the grain on wood that's been sanded or scraped. If, if the wood, like the spindles, have a spoke shave finish on them, and <clears throat> you don't have to raise the grain on that, so it st saves, you, saves you a step. But like on the inside of this arm rail, this was scraped. Uh, the inside of the comb was scraped and sanded. The knuckles were, <clears throat> were sanded. So uh, I've taken a damp cloth and gone over it, and now I'll take a little bit of light sandpaper, wherever, I think I've got a sheet like yeah, right here, <clears throat> and just <clears throat> lightly hit it. Well, I've uh, knocked down the raised grain on the on the chair. It'll it'll probably raise again, especially out here on this end grain of knuckles. That's what will really pop out. So, but after the first coat of milk paint, I can I can knock it down too. So uh, so I mixed it to two waters to one to one paint. One thing I find is that uh, uh, a lot of my students, when they're trying to learn how to do my my finish, get it too thick and. I'd rather err on the on the thin side than on the thick side. One of the beautiful things about milk paint <clears throat> is that it's it's just like it's part of the wood. It's like no, nothing's there. Um, you know, it's it's just uh, it has a look that no other paint that I've ever tried to get looks like. And uh, so it's worth putting up with some of its uh, issues and problems because of that because of that look. So, uh, so this is still settling, foam settling to the top, stick my finger on the top there. And uh, <clears throat> now, if you've got some little holes in your, in your piece, you can fill it. Uh, I've always used a water-based filler, but I bought this probably 30 years ago, and I still got a little bit of it left. Uh, I don't even know if they still sell it. This is Balin's, and uh, it was just a water-based water -based filler, but the paint, the milk paint goes over it, goes over it real well. Now, hard to fill anything quite large, it'll show through the milk paint. Uh, <clears throat> so, anyway, that's what, uh, so there, I had a couple of little tiny spots. The milk paint will show up any little hole, especially on a big surface like the, like the seat, uh, because it's this, you know, uniform surface, this uniform color, and there's only one thing to look at, and that's that little bitty hole that you didn't see before you painted the chair. <clears throat> and I use a, uh, polyester, a high quality polyester brush. This is a Wooster. Uh, it's a $13, $14 brush and it's inch and a half sash brush so I can get in get into areas. Um, <clears throat> so uh, okay let's let's see if the foams come to the top here on uh, on this. Okay so take the cheesecloth off real careful like And you can see all that foam has come to the top and down below all that is some nice paint. Okay, so if you can see that, see I'm just left with some nice creamy paint down in there. I could use the paint just the way it is because it's just raw wood and it, and it sticks to it well. But I've got a pine seat and it doesn't stick to the pine perfect because the pine has pitch in it. And even if the pitch is not real apparent, there's still little streaks of pitch that sometimes milk paint has a hard time <clears throat> adhering to. As far as the maple legs and the oak, there's no problem with, uh, with, with any of that. So I'm going to mix up a small amount of, of Extra Bond, which is sold by the Old Fashioned Milk Paint Company, and uh, 
some people told me that you can water down white glue and it'll do the same thing or, or I don't know what else but I just use this and I get a good result I don't want to I don't want to mess with it uh, <clears throat> so you mix this two to one so there's uh, one of the extra bond and two of the paint so this will probably give me a little bit more than I need to paint the seat <clears throat> so I'll just continue on with the rest of the chair till I run out because we'll be putting uh, at least three coats on the seat of red and at least three coats on the oak on the maple depending on how it looks after the second coat we might stop with two coats or I might go on with a with, with a third coat because the goal is to is to cover it with the least amount of coats possible because you want to keep it really really thin <clears throat> 